Uh, Trey, you want to start us off? Sure. Hey, Coach. Uh, I was wondering, a lot of times after you watch the video, I guess, of the scrimmage, you see a lot of different things. Some things you thought were good, were bad, and vice versa. So what did you see out of, the, out of watching the tape that maybe you didn't see um, when you watched it before live? Well, the number one thing is what – which I didn't think we would be, Trey, but we're not, you know, we're not in very good shape yet. Uh, we're not in game shape. We're in good shape. We're not in game shape. And so uh, we have to do a few things differently at practice uh, so we can get there. But that was probably the number one thing. I thought our, um, our defense uh, fatigued faster than our offense, uh, and therefore they got outplayed on Saturday. Um, they had not been that way necessarily in the practices. Uh, so I anticipate uh, that uh, being amped up quite a little bit uh, Friday for our next scrimmage. But we are going to scrimmage. We need to. We certainly can't go into a ball game uh, playing the way we did uh, with the team, but uh, with the entire team. But I thought we threw and caught the ball well. And, and after watching the tape, we did. And we protected very, very well on, on the offensive line. You go back to today's practice, and the defense has gotten after us up front on the old line two days in a row. So it, we, we've got to bring that intensity uh, in practice uh, on the D-line linebackers uh, to a game-type situation, which a scrimmage is. And I think we will. I uh, feel very confident we will. We just didn't uh, on Friday. Nate. Sam, as far as linebackers, because you weren't real happy after the scrimmage, anything from the scrimmage or even today's practice that's any different? Well, I think that's a position, one of the positions that we have to become a more physical group. Uh, we have to go make plays. That's what linebackers are supposed to do. You know, uh, uh, we can't run into an offensive lineman and not shed him and, and make a play. And, uh, that's something that we did not do Friday, and uh, we're certainly working on it. And you can't just say, okay, well, we're going to go out there and do the same thing and get better. I mean, you have to make specific drills uh, for those guys to get better. I mean, you can't just – can't bench everybody and be mad at everybody. You, you, you just have to work to get better, and those are called drills and individual and things. And we had some live drills today with the tight ends and the linebackers. So – uh, we have to become a more physical team, and they do too. And and uh, that group there is is still, you know, like everybody on the team, a work in the progress. But if they're willing and they're physical, and we just got to get them to shed blocks and make tackles. Thank you, Scotty. Hey Sam, I was curious if you had an update on Trey Knox and just how he's done the first two plus weeks. It seems like he's maybe flying under the radar a little. He's doing well. Um, he's making some plays, obviously. Um, we are uh, making a big emphasis on our wideouts in their blocking. Uh, uh, we've gotten better there. He's always been a physical guy, but um, we, we continue to have to work on getting off man press and, uh, and getting open. You know, part of the sacks and things that we've had are we got to get people open, and he's done a good job of that. He's a good one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one ball catcher, and uh, he's done a nice job. He practices extremely hard, and uh, his skills are getting better each day. Tom. Hey, Sam, I'm wondering what the points of emphasis have been for you in practice this week, and aside from the conditioning part, what you expect to be much better in Friday scrimmage? Well, I think the first thing is the strain of the play. You know, a lot of times I think we feel like when we hit a guy, that's when the play's over. To be honest with you, when you hit a guy, that's when the play starts. And uh, so we, the whole whole week week's um, uh, emphasis has been on finishing blocks, finishing tackles, finishing runs. Uh, finishing one-on-one, -on -one, things of that nature, and uh, just basically playing through the whistle. And uh, we've made a big emphasis on that, and that we, we certainly expect that to uh, be a change uh, this Friday. Matt Jones. Yeah, Sam, you, you mentioned not being in game shape. Can you kind of 
take us through what the difference between game shape and, and just the, the workouts that you guys uh, have done in the offseason, just being in general shape. And then how much do you think the spring has affected where you are in that regard right now, not being able to practice? Well, to be honest with you, the spring not being able to practice shouldn't really affect us that much as far as in shape goes. Now, uh, it would certainly affect you in understanding the game and understand offense, defense, expectations. You know, you the kids don't really know your football expectations until you get out there. You know, they know expectations of going to class and weights and running and sprinting but they really don't know the expectations of what you want out of each and every drill and each and every period when you go to practice and they are high. And uh, so I think I understand that standard has helped them. Uh, the other thing about game shape and practice shape or things of that nature, it's a lot of times you're in shape, but your mind won't let you go because you're thinking of something that just happened, mostly bad, uh, if a big play happened on you. Uh, you, your mind affects your whole entire body. We have to be, like I told you a long time ago, we have to be a mentally tough team. And as, if we can continue to work on the mental toughness, I think that will mentally will be in better shape. I, I believe that. I believe we practice hard. I believe we have plenty of conditioning, but I be, believe that our mind needs to be stronger so we can work through those situations. I don't necessarily think we're in bad shape. I think that we just have to be a stronger football team mentally. Jason. Hey coach, just the offensive line progression and, and where you guys are right now. How do you, how good do you feel about the progression you guys are making uh, with the offensive line and, and the depth there? I think it's coming along really fine. I, I, I do. Uh, you know, if you grade them as a whole in the scrimmage on Friday, they 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 were out, you know they played really well, protected well, ran the ball well, had some nice holes in there, played hard, had fun, um, and then uh, the last two days, uh, uh, I'd say we've we've run the ball pretty well, but we have not protected the quarterback, and that's concerning to me. And we've got to get better, and it's concerning to Coach Davis, and it's concerning to the old line, but. I think we're progressing pretty well. I think we have plenty of tackles on the team that can that can play in this league. Uh, we're still a little bit con uh, not concerned, but we're we're still haven't f quite found uh, all our inside pieces yet, and we're still looking at several different guys at uh, the guard spots and and uh, certainly the uh, second and third center. Bob. Uh, hey, Sam, how you doing? Good. Um, hey, the defensive end sounds like, like Coates and Gerald have had really good camps. Is that continuing? How do you feel about the guys behind them? I, I'm assuming guys like Soli, Williams, Gregory, if there's some other guys in the mix. Those you, are, yeah. you just said it. I mean, those are the guys that, that right now are working in and out of there. Uh, uh, Gregory has gotten some snaps with the ones. Uh, he's earned it. He plays extremely hard. Um, solely, certainly, you know, uh, as he continues to grow and, and develop his game, uh, he's making more and more plays. Uh, but I think you probably hit the, the, fi the five guys there at that end spot that, uh, that have gotten the most reps and, and the most production. Do you feel good? You, know, you talk about conditioning. Obviously, in the heat, you got to play a lot of D line. Do you feel you'll have a good rotation there? I think we will, you know, obviously a guy's a one for a reason and you want him to stay out there as long as he is uh, making plays and, and as long as he's capable of being better than a fresh guy coming in as a two. But uh, so we're continuing to work there because obviously you want to keep your ones on the field. But I, I, I feel very uh, strong about our rotation and I think we'll be fine. Hutch. Yeah, Sam, you mentioned still kind of figuring things out on the interior of your line. We noticed the other day Ty Clary getting a lot of lot more work at guard than we've seen. Is is that a move that has been made more permanent, or is are you still just trying him at multiple spots? No, I don't think so. I think Clary brings a lot of experience to the O line, and and uh, we we are looking at him as a possibility as a guard, uh, along with uh, Luke Jones as a guard and as well as a center and 
uh, Kalanen as a guard as well as a center. Uh, you know, the center quarterback handled the ball every single snap, and certainly we have to be consistent there. But uh, uh, we did, we have looked at several different guys uh, uh, at that spot, at those three spots actually, and we're just trying to find the right combination. We feel like we're pretty close. Um, the left guard position is probably as, as the most open position that we have on the offensive line. Seth? Yeah, Sam, uh, I was just curious, how much Georgia game prep have you started filtering into practice? Uh, none, zero. And we, we, gotta, we gotta get better ourselves before we worry about Georgia. We got plenty of time, I think we've got three and a half weeks. <clears throat> None. We haven't talked about them. We played their fight song every stretch, but other than that, we haven't talked about Georgia. It's way too early for that. Ty. Yeah, Coach, you brought up mental toughness again. On Friday, you talked about how you're trying to get the team and reinforce them to sprint off the field rather than walk off the field. What are some other points of emphasis where you're really stressing this team to be mentally tough? I think it's the, the one thing we've done is we've incorporated a lot more one-on-one tight end linebackers, O-line linebackers, uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one competition. I think, I think uh, you can find out a lot about a man if he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation and there's nobody to blame. You know, it's not the right guard, the left guard, the, the corner, the safety. We, we've tried to put them in a lot more one-on-one -on -one situations to see how they react. And if they get beat, I, I want it to bother them. And if they win, I want them to be happy about it. So we've done quite a bit more of physical one-on-one -on -one, uh, winner-loser type situations so we can uh, see who can handle getting beat and come back and will they come back the next time and win the rep or, or at least compete for the rep. And so a lot of physical, been a physical two days, to be honest with you. And it's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one and man-on-man. Uh, -man. You know, football is just a bunch of – about who wants to whip somebody else's tail, you know. And and uh, that's what we're trying to get done in, in uh, individual. John Neighbors. Hey, Coach. Uh, out of curiosity, I know that it's been uh, something that Felipe Franks talked about yesterday and just how his confidence is an all-time high. And I was just curious out of as far as, uh, you know, you taking over a team that struggled uh, in the previous years, has there been any issues with dealing with team confidence? And if so, how is that something you handle? Do you do it individually, collectively? Uh, how is the confidence of the team looking right now? I think it's a good question. I think it's a little bit about – all what you just said. But the only way I know you can build confidence is you can put a guy in the right position, A, for him to have success. And then B, he has to see it. And I mean, you can't just tell a guy, hey man, you're doing great and he's not, because he won't even believe it. And uh, so what we're trying to find is a good, and some good reps that we say, hey, look, you did it once, you can do it four, five, six, eight times, you know? So we're trying to, we're trying to have some success with each kid, uh, clip that uh, tape out, show them what they are capable of doing and try to build confidence that way. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can't really talk about it because it just doesn't work that way. I mean, I think you have to see it. All right, we'll, uh, we'll start our second round here. If you've got questions, have them hit me up in the chat, let me know. Trey? Coach, you gotta be you gotta be real versatile to play that nickel spot, right? I mean, yeah. like how difficult is that to find a guy there and and how's Greg Brooks been doing? Who else is is challenging there? Yeah, Greg's done a nice job. McClellan's done a nice job out there. Uh, we've moved slush in there some, done some of that. Uh, Joe Fouche has come down and played that spot a, a little bit. You know, it's just a it's a hybrid. You know, it's not really a linebacker, it's not really a safety, it's just a guy. Mason, I mean, it's just a guy that is a big physical guy that, that you know, uh, has to be uh, a linebacker in the run and, and a corner or a, or a safety in the passing game. So those guys are very, very valuable to us. And, and we feel pretty confident in where we're headed with that position. Tom. 
So the pressure on the quarterback, you mentioned, that means somebody defensively is winning some reps. Yeah, absolutely. Who all has been doing that? And also wanted to ask you about the safety spot, and it kind of blends into what you just said with Nickel, I think. Yeah, I mean, A, you know, the it's not just one guy on the D-line. You know, uh, Dorian Gerald does a nice job of rushing the passer, and, of course, Coach does, and Marshall, and, uh, you know, it's been kind of a little bit of committee, to be honest with you, but somebody's getting there, uh, or it might be a linebacker key blitzing in or something of that nature. But they, I, a lot of times, to be honest with you, secondary is covering them. There's no place to go with the ball, and uh, it's just happening. Uh, but the safety spot, you know, it's kind of almost the same type of guys I talked to, you know, talked to you about. Catalan obviously is, is doing a really good job back there, but. Uh, um, we're we're kind of rotating a little bit in field boundary safeties, uh, nickels, things of that nature. We're just trying to make sure that we find the right guys, and we you have to multiple teach in that area because of the fact that of injuries and honestly because of COVID. Will Catalan be cleared for scrimmage on Friday, or where does he stand? Oh yeah, he he practiced full go today. Much. Yeah, Coach, you've said before that this, this scrimmage on Friday is probably going to be the, the last scrimmage of camp. I mean, is two scrimmages usually kind of what you do, or is it yeah. just because this is weird, or what, what's that like? No, I, th I think every, all of us – not all of us, I'll just speak for myself. I think you're always nervous about scrimmaging, you know, simply because it's tackle on the ground, a lot of bodies flying around. And, and I think you'd be uh, a little nervous of scrimmaging, even if you had – unbelievable amount of depth and uh so certainly you can limit carries of guys and probably most coaches do and and stay off the quarterback and those type things but the bottom line is Barry and his, that staff on defense thinks they can teach tackling and individual we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackling drills and things offense versus defense it's just different when you have all those people out there with bodies flying around so um I, I know we're going to scrimmage Friday. And then after that, uh, you know, we'll still be three weeks out. Uh, in a normal non-COVID world, you would scrimmage uh, two weeks out. And so we still have that opportunity to do that. And it may be a partial scrimmage. You know, it may be something where part of it's live, part of it's thud. But Friday will not be that. It'll be a full go. Uh, let's see what we have on our football team. Bob. Yeah, I think you said last Friday you'd be able to evaluate the tight ends better after you looked at the scrimmage film. What, uh, what, what, what's your take on those guys now? I think they know. I think they have to, you know, they have to become better blockers. I think that we've made a big emphasis. Again, you can't just sit here and talk about, well, guys got to get better. You got to give them opportunities to get better, and you have to give them opportunities and individual to get better. And that's what we've done. We've made a big emphasis on them and the linebackers. Of course, like I say, we, we put them uh, together today. And uh, the bottom line is just the strain of the finish. It's uh, the want to of, of uh, wanting to whip the other man's tail. And uh, we're getting closer uh, with that tight end group. Anybody, obviously Hudson got a lot of hype out of high school and his, his brother's a great tight end. What, is anybody standing out there in that group? Not really, you know, um, they're all doing a, a, a good job. Uh, they're all getting in there and, and, and becoming uh, uh, more physical. Um, but, you know, obviously you have a depth chart where it'd be one, two, three, whatever it is. But I think we're still unsettled to who might be that guy or those two of the three or four guys uh, at this point, which is fine. I mean, we've only had one scrimmage and we just completed practice nine of 25, but uh, they're heading in the right direction. I'm pleased. I don't want to sound like I'm not pleased with the tight ends because I am. I, I, we just have to get better at that position, just like all of them. Seth? Yeah, Sam, what have you seen from Josh Oglesby uh, this fall? Well, he got dinged up in the, in the uh, scrimmage, uh, so I don't know how long he's going to be out. Um, but 
before before his injury, um, he was a great addition and is a great addition to the team. And very tough, obviously very fast, but he's a physical guy and uh, just a wonderful kid. And and uh, we'll have to wait and see how long uh, that this injury is going to keep him out. All right, we got time for one or two more. If you want to let me know in the chat, Nate. As far as receivers, anybody besides your your, your kind of top three that are stepping up? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Davion Warren's had, you know, he's, he's done a nice job. He got speed, you know, um, uh, TJ Hammond had, you know, he's fast, you know, so he, he's gotten behind him a few times and, and, uh, Colton Gothier is really, he's done a nice job. He, he can catch the football, he can get open. So, uh, those guys just right off, off the top of my head, uh, uh, besides, you know, obviously about Trey and, and uh, and the other guys, so. All right, last one, Tom. Okay, I wonder what you thought about going indoors today. I mean, maybe it was the first time you've been in there, what that felt like, and then will Friday be for uh, the, the stadium? Yeah, we're going to go in the stadium on Friday. And today, to be honest with you, we're just changing up the atmosphere of practice. I mean, it was a nice day outside. We were a little earlier earlier this morning. We were a little bit worried about the grass being slick and all those things. But by the time practice started, we could have went outside. But we just honestly, we just wanted to give them a different change of pace, and uh, it was real cool on the indoor. And we, we, you know, we were going three days in a row here, so uh, it didn't have anything to do with the tempo. I mean, we were flying around, but it was just a change of pace for the guys. All right, last, last one, Matt Jones. Yeah, Sam, I've heard you say in the past that you like to have your first offensive line set about two and a half weeks before the first game. Uh, with that said, how much does this next scrimmage go toward you, you know, moving forward with your starting five? Yeah, that's an old football guy asking that question. Um, big. I mean, it's big. Um, this is a – you know, it's not all or nothing, but I think you'll – solidify four of them, you know, and then you'll, there'll be another position there where you go, you know what, this is a guy we're going to, we're going to put with the ones and we're going to live with it. Uh, unless, you know, somebody else just looks really good in the next week after this scrimmage. So it's a big deal. Uh, uh, you can tell a lot about your team whenever, you know, everything's live. And so it's a good question. And the answer is, Yes, uh, scrimmage is a big deal for everybody, probably especially the offensive line. All right, that's going to wrap us up. Thanks, Coach.